Hello, it's Kathy Cassidy and I'm here to read you another chapter of Sunday Girl. And this time it's chapter seven, which um, is all about Jude's new year. And maybe an unexpected guest may turn up at her dad's New Year's fancy dress party. We'll have to see. So here we go. Victoria is dancing around the living room of the flat in a red mini dress and a towering black nylon wig that looks like something a guard should be wearing outside Buckingham Palace. This hairdo is called a beehive, Victoria tells me. It was all the rage in the 60s. Very elegant, very cool. Your dad bought me the wig for Christmas. It's probably not too late to take it back to the shop, I say. Victoria picks up a fluffy pink cushion from the sofa and chucks it at me. Cheeky, she says. Earlier on, she helped me put my hair up in big scary rollers and now we are trying to do our makeup. Pale faces, white lipstick and loads of black eyeliner all around our eyes so we look like cool 1960s chicks or pandas maybe. Victoria is waving a mascara about as she dances. Dad has already cracked open the wine, but Victoria isn't drinking. She never does. I guess that makes her the exact polar opposite of mum. I wonder if that's why Dad chose her. Probably. Dad comes in with a platter of warm sausage rolls and a plate of cheese butties, which he puts down on the table with a flourish. He has a red apron tied around his best Elvis catsuit, the black one with the stand-up collar and the fringy flares. His black quiff is solid with hairspray and his sideburns are long and thick and lush. He looks grim, but I don't care because he's happy. And besides, there's nobody here from school to see him and laugh. The CD switches to blue suede shoes and Dad twirls Victoria around the room a couple of times before wiggling off to the kitchen to fetch more party food. I stand in front of the mirror to unwind the big rollers from my hair and then brush it through. It's very big, very 60s, very scary. I'm wearing a black mini dress with big white polka dots, white lacy tights and flat black boots. Perfect, says Dad, shimmying past with trifle and chocolate cake. Hideous, I correct him. Victoria places a finger against my white painted lips. She whispers, no grumbles, it's New Year's Eve. We're going to have fun, OK? OK. The doorbell rings and the first crowd of partygoers arrives. Middle-aged neighbours and friends of Dad and Victoria, all wearing short dresses and flicky bouffant hair like Priscilla Presley, Mrs Elvis to you, or stick on sideburns and chest wigs like the man himself. Dad has left a basket of Elvis wigs and dark glasses by the door for the uninspired, but most people have made an effort. Guests keep coming. Hawaiian Elvis, GI Elvis, Fat Elvis, even Dead Elvis, complete with halo, harp and fluffy wings. It's not my sort of party, obviously, but I fix a cheesy smile on my face and offer around the crisps and nuts, making small talk with catsuit-clad strangers and people I meet once a year who tell me how much I've grown. I'm the one who remembers the baked potatoes are still in the oven and rescues them before they get burned to a crisp. I'm the one who grates cheese for the spuds and refills the ice cube tray with water and runs down to the corner shop for more plastic cups when the first lot run out. OK there, Jude, Victoria asks as we pass in a squash of people in the hall. Want to come and dance? Later, I tell her. It's 11 o'clock and a posse of large beehived women have taken over the living room, dancing around their handbags in pointy stilettos. If one stood on you by mistake, it would break every bone in your foot. I give up on trying to be a party animal and make myself a hot chocolate and a round of toast and jam. Getting it upstairs is tough. I have to climb over white quiffed Elvis and blue rinsed Priscilla, squashed in together on the stairs, snogging the face off each other. I have to convince people I'm definitely not in the queue for the loo. My room has been invaded by mounds of coats and jackets. I lift them carefully and ditch them in Dad and Victoria's room, 
where Hawaiian Elvis lies snoring, spread eagled across the duvet. Nice. Finally, I shut the door behind me and take a deep breath. I am not a party girl. My face is aching from hours of smiling, making small talk with respectable middle-aged people dressed up in rhinestone flares. Enough is enough. Will you be okay? Dad asked me earlier before the guests started coming. I thought you'd bring some friends along, someone your own age. That nice Nula girl, maybe. Nula's busy, I lied. I'll be fine, Dad. Don't worry about me. The truth is, I don't want my friends at this party, not even Nula. They would laugh. They'd think it was crazy, bizarre, and I'd feel like they were laughing at me. Better to do it alone. I want to be here for Dad, for Victoria, and I want to see their friends and smile and laugh and off around the cheese straws. I'll definitely go downstairs again before midnight because I love the bit where everyone sings Old Lang Syne and I want to be the first to hug Dad and Victoria and wish them a happy new year. Until midnight, though, I'm hiding out, eating toast and sipping hot chocolate in a tiny box room in the dark. It's the last day of the old year, the eve of the new one. There's a sheet of blue notepaper on the bed, my New Year's resolutions. Although it's dark in here, I can see what I've written in the light from the lamppost outside. Number one, be the best ever bridesmaid for Dad and Victoria, if they ask me. Number two, give Gran more hugs. Number three, use the curling tongs Mum gave me at least once a week so she thinks I like them. Hide her Wizard of Oz DVD. Number four, learn to cook so there are no more turkey disasters. Number five, pass my grade four piano exams with merit. The problem with writing resolutions is that it's hard to know where to stop. There are so many things I'd like to change about my life. It would be a full-time job fixing them all. Actually, it's other people's lives I'd like to change and that is even harder One thing I've learned about other people is they rarely do what you want them to. They have ideas of their own. There is a loud crash from the street outside and I go to the window to look down at the frosty street. A crowd of wheelie bins have fallen over and a couple of wisps of balled up Christmas wrap are blowing around on the pavement. A lanky figure in a black beanie hat grapples with one of the bins, struggling to haul it back up again. My heart is thumping. This boy is haunting me. What is he doing in the street outside my dad's house at 11.30 on New Year's Eve? If I could control other people, I would make Kevin Carter back off and leave me alone. Or get him to give up rollerblading before he breaks his neck. Or both. I hide behind the curtain, although, and although it's dark in here, there's no way he could see me if he looked up. I'm safe. He looks up and I jump back from the window like I've been stung. It's not that Kevin Carter is awful. He's not a geek. He's not a loser. He's almost good looking in a lazy, floppy, blonde kind of way. It's just that I'm not ready for this. Long legged boys skating around on the pavement outside my dad's house, upsetting the bins, the neighbours and the whole balance of life as I know it. I don't want it, do I? If he comes inside, he'll meet my dad and my last hope, any last hopes that I can pass myself off as normal, ordinary and unremarkable will fizzle and die. He'll meet Victoria, the sanest, safest person in my so-called life, and he will see a plump, giggling woman in a furry black wig and he'll skate right out of here as fast as he can. I can't risk it. Carter has sorted the wheelie bins and begins clunking up the path towards the house. I pinch myself, wishing I could wake up and say it was all a nightmare. It is, but sadly I'm not waking up any time soon. I creep out onto the landing and lean over the banisters. Kevin Carter is in my dad's hall, telling a woman in a silver mini dress that he's a very good friend of Jude Riley. That's nice, says the woman who has clearly never heard of me. Who have you come as anyway? Blonde, preteen Elvis on rollerblades? 
She offers him the basket of wigs and sunglasses and obediently he removes his beanie hat and pulls on a black quiffed wig and shades. He edges past the silver mini woman and onto the house, on into the house. I can't bear it. I want to scream, shout and drag him out of there by his black nylon wig. What do I do? Barricade myself in my room and hide under the bed until he's gone or march downstairs and chuck him out as the gate crusher he most certainly is. I see a blue tinsel wig lying discarded on the landing and the glimmer of an idea starts to form. I drag it on, glancing in the landing mirror. I look like a pale-faced Martian with blue tinsel hair. My own dad wouldn't know me. I stomp downstairs and grab Kevin Carter by the sleeve of his hoodie. What are you doing here, I demand. This is a private party. I was just looking for you, he grins. But you don't know me, I glower. You've never met me before. Haven't I? Carter asks, looking baffled. No, I am a complete and total stranger. Right, says Carter. You're definitely not Jude Riley then? Definitely not. He grins, shrugs and offers me a carton of full fat milk and a crumpled selection box. I guess I'm a gate crasher then, he admits, but I bought these for you to say Happy New Year. I put the milk down on the kitchen counter and frown at the selection box. The box has been opened at one end and when I look more closely, it's clear that at least half of the chocolate bars are missing. My little brother got to it before me, Carter says sadly. You have to go, I tell him. I only just got here. And now it's time to go. I turn him round and propel him along the hallway, which takes longer than you would think because of the rollerblades and the crowds of party people clogging the place up. As he clumps out over the doorstep, a gang of non-Elvis guests burst into the hall, laughing. Posh and Bex and Marilyn Monroe and an assortment of Santas, friends of Dad from the lookalike agency, obviously. Things are just hotting up, Carter protests. So let's cool them down, I say firmly. I don't know you. You don't know me. You can't just barge into other people's parties, OK? Carter pauses by the gate. Do I get a New Year's kiss, he pleads. No way. Just push off. Jude, he says, tugging at the blue tinsel wig. I know it's you. I don't know anyone called Jude, I tell him. OK, whatever. I just wanted to see you and say Happy New Year. He takes off the Elvis wig and the shades and gives them to me. I bite my lip as the lamplight shines on his floppy blonde hair and hazel eyes. And before I know it, before I see it coming, he leans forward and plants a tiny kiss on the tip of my nose. Then he pulls on his beanie hat and skates away and I'm left standing at the gate alone in a polka dot dress and a blue tinsel wig. Behind me, the door bursts open and a sea of people surge out into the street, squealing and laughing and counting down the bells. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! There's an orgy of snogs and hugs and Dad and Victoria scoop me up in a big cuddle and everyone's laughing and dancing and singing Old Lang Syne. I join hands with Marilyn Monroe and G.I. Elvis and my wig slips off and I let myself be pushed about in a big crowd of loud, warm, happy revellers. I think of Gran and Grandad tucked up in bed at home and Mum who will be out on the rouse with Giovanni or Sue. I wish for a good new year, a happy new year for all of us. As the crowd breaks up and head back into the house, I look over my shoulder and I'm almost certain I can see a lanky figure standing in the shadows further along the road. I wave into the darkness and the figure waves back, then turns and skates away. So that, that was chapter seven from Sunday Girl. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow to find out what happens next. And until then, stay safe and keep smiling. And uh, yeah, just remember whatever you can do to make the lockdown pass more easily or to make a little bit of escapism in these difficult days. 
is well worth it. Take care.